everyone. Welcome to your next episode of the Cosmic Matrix podcast with your hosts, Laura Matsu, myself, and my husband, Bernhard Gunther. So uh, this podcast, we're going to be getting into the topic of scarcity consciousness and the true na- meaning of abundance. And especially in spiritual communities, I think this is a very hot topic because there's so many distortions around it. And there's also just so many core beliefs that we hold about money that I think get projected into our world. And um, I mean, it's very true that money can be the root of all evil, but I feel it's more actually the love of money and the desire for money and power over other things in life that can actually be harmful. But I've also noticed that in spiritual communities, it's really just like the right brain and the left brain can't work well together. Because to me, money is like a very left brain thing that takes a lot of organizing, a lot of attention to detail. And it's really about just understanding that the left brain and the right brain can work in cohesion and money is just basically a skill to be learned like any other language, you know, um, it's financial literacy, that's what they call it. So myself and Bernhard have definitely been getting into this topic lately because we have a lot of right brain action happening in our lives, a lot of creativity, a lot of, you know, emotional emotional intelligence, I guess you could say. But then sometimes a lot of people who have this more right-brained way of being can have an underdeveloped left brain way of being. And I know for myself, that's been my own learning as recently. Um, but yeah, so we just have kind of a lot of personal conversations around this topic lately. So it makes it really interesting for us. Also on the forum, um, if you're listening to this podcast, we have the second hour on of the podcast and also a membership forum. We had a whole thread about, I think they called poverty consciousness though. And we specifically didn't say that this was about poverty consciousness because that's a whole other topic in myself. Scarcity is more about, you know, not feeling like there's enough in the world to go around. Um, and then abundance is like, understanding that there's a lot to go around and seeing and seeing um, this abundance everywhere and that, you know, we're very provided for in that sense. So even though we're not just referring to money as in ab- abundance or sorry, abundance as money, um, we're going to talk about that topic to begin with, because money and uh, currency is just how we trade in the Western world, all over the world, rather. And, you know, you could go like, I mean, for myself, I lived in an intentional community an eco village type community, but there's still the presence of money. So it's not something that me, I for my me myself personally, I think I'm going to get away from in this lifetime, nor should I think we should. So what are your kind of cons- ideas about money? Yeah, out of personal experience, we can see in our own lives. And I feel mostly there's there are two extremes of that topic, like almost like black and white. Either people fall very much into the love for money, the greed and materialism and more is better and all of that. How can I make more money, more, more, more? Mm-hmm. And then the opposite outside of the coin when, you know, the quote-unquote distorted spiritual view that money is evil materialism is evil you know it's almost the equation of you need to be poor walk in the cloth have no possessions in order to become self-realized enlightened unite with god and all of that so these two extreme poles yeah you know and then you have these forces of the matrix which money ties also to money wealth and power and sex yeah so money sex and power and that's how what the matrix is almost based on and that's why many spiritual edition they preach the aesthetic life you know to reject all of that to yeah. you know reject the material world to not have any ego ambitions no power no sex you know the whole almost distorted form of celibacy of suppression of sexual mm. desires and also of money like money's evil like you don't let's don't get sucked into the greed and so all this needs to be rejected and a lot of hippie communities that i've you know that's what i kind of fell into i was like i wanted to work in the gift economy for a while i tried that didn't work out very well you know i that's what i felt i was like i'm just gonna abandon exactly i think at first it comes i can see this myself because i used to also reject money like money's evil rich people are evil every you know all of that it's yeah. very generalized and i think it comes from a well-meaning place because 
because we see the world how much damage all this greed this materialism yeah. has done so we find want to find another way but reject it we throw the baby out with the bathwater and don't see, and see that there might be a different way and i really liked you know Sri Aurobindo from Integral Yoga talked about these forces the uh, wealth which is money sex and power and the, how the Azuric forces the call forces have uh, hijacked it working through people and just you know feeding the ego the lower vital the lower nature and all of that and then the reaction from the spiritual perspective to reject all that but then you get handed actually over to the Azuric forces mm -hmm. you know it just goes more rampant so we need to bring the power back not to our own egoic you know quote unquote selfish desires but to make it in the service of the divine mm -hmm. you know and, and when we talk about that we need to also basically talk about what is money what is abundance what you also refer to is money actually this material thing you know these dollar notes or whatever's the number on your bank account digitally whatever yeah and like you mentioned before it's just a currency it's just what we have agreed upon um for trade yeah as an exchange and then you look into that then you realize that money in itself is just energy and that's you know that's money all, is fuel remember that exactly that's what, I, on this podcast? that's what i was just mentioned because yeah. we all hear about you know the spiritual money is just energy you know and then you know a lot of spiritual people myself <laughs> we throw this around money is just energy it's just exchange um but you can go even deeper that uh, we listen to this very interesting podcast um what is man, the art of money the art of money uh, which is really good, by the way, uh, Lauren. I've been reading that book. Um, yeah, because she's a somatic psychologist, but then now she calls herself a financial therapist. So she really takes in this more both spiritual and body-based approach. So that was I really appreciated that. Yeah, her name is Barry Tesla. The book is The Art of Money because most of you think of money like all, you know, the self-help that's out there is how to make more money, think rich, grow rich, you know, the distortion of the secret, just think positive thought, imagine mm -hmm. the ch checks coming in your bank account. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's it's not a, too much about how to get more money. It's just like, what is our relationship to money? What is the role? How has the matrix distorted it? Our own belief systems, our shame around it, our upbringing, our karma, all of that, you know, the more embodied approach. Yeah, and also not even just seeing abundance in the form of money, although that's important, but also, you know, just seeing abundance in every aspect of your life. Like, I remember um, when I was working on a permaculture farm and we would harvest all the vegetables for that season, I would look at it and I'd be like, wow, like, the, I would just think in my mind, like, you can't buy vegetables like this in the grocery store, you know? To me, that was like a, a truly abundant moment. And also, this abundance can show up in all aspects in our lives. And I know of people who have a lot of like financial, quote unquote, like wealth or resources, but they live in a state of scarcity consciousness. So I really also want to make this distinction that it's actually not so much about how much money you have but how abundant your life is in general exactly and abundance truly means like you made a good example working you know nature is abundant yeah it provides an abundance many m people mistake just money for abundance mm -hmm. alone that's not abundance abundance means also relates to you know being being spiritual the word spiritus means actually energetic alive feeling passion for life, being fully tuned in. And that's what you see in, in nature as well. It's alive. It's it's creating, mm -hmm. right? And so abundance is just also being, it goes way beyond the material collection of dollar notes or this hoarding, because that's what it has turned into, hoarding of money. And that's how the matrix works, um, especially the, you know, you look into the matrix control system, the bank and families, the Rothschilds, there's definitely this hoarding of power and money, yeah. you know, and, and keeping people in poverty on, on, on purpose and all of that. But it's easy to fall, you know, of course, we can blame the matrix, the government, the, the banking institutions, you know, the debt system and all of that tax taxation, you know, for um, the poverty in the world. And but what they really do, they use our own program. They have programmed us, our unconscious guilt and shame around money, these beliefs against us. So, you know yeah. what I mean? So we almost recreate that. Well, this is also something I learned recently from a totally different person from from a trauma therapist about, you know, he talks about basically 
multiple people in the somatic community talks about how basically like the birth of agriculture really destroyed us as a social structure because once it became about how many resources that we could obtain we became in competition with the people around us rather than gathering together in a tribal element you know we would we would basically go away to hunt and then we would come back to the tribe but now it's like every man for himself whoever can connect literally whoever can collect more resources and that's what we see is his money becomes more powerful and this is basically basically put us in competition against each other it's put us to fear the other person because it's literally been by like our our wiring has been, been our dna i mean we can even go further back this probably happened even before this but has been wired in the way that's opposite for us to you know evolve because we cannot you know we evolve better if we do it collectively rather than individualistically and so that's kind of this wiring that we've gotten into this capitalistic greed i'm competing against you if there's if i have more you have less that's an actual reality that's been integrated in, into the world but the fact is that i feel on a basic biological level we're actually meant to join with each other and to not compete to see what the other person can contribute to us you know and to build these kind of communities i think this is going to be maybe something more that happens in this pluto and aquarius kind of kind of time um pluto being this area of transformation and Aquarius being about the collective and the community, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still, you know, competing against each other and seeing other people, even in our neighborhood as our enemy, like, and I even remember just the shift happening within my lifetime, like I'm in my 30s now. And when I grew up, it was a smaller like town. I could knock on any of my neighbor's house in my on my block and even the two blocks around me and ask them for something, you know, just to borrow or whatever or just to visit them. And now I see this is not the reality anymore. I don't know what it's like in the small town that I grew up in, but you know, you're like, I've literally had neighbors who were my enemy, you know? And that's like, and to me, this is also kind of the, this dissolving of um, like the more that we're competing against each other, the more we're going to be in scarcity consciousness as well. And that's how the Azuric forces work who have hijacked power, wealth and money. Mm -hmm. Uh, power, wealth, and sex as well. It's this ego consciousness. And what you mentioned, the trap of competition. And you might say that competition serves its purpose, so better products, better services, like healthy competition, quote-unquote. Yeah, yeah. But it gets very distorted if if you um, really, you know, there's, there's a lot of corruption because of that. Then in the end of the day, more for me, less for others. You know, we or the trap of competition ties out, ties also into the trap of comparison. Mm -hmm. And the in the the matrix trap is just doing things for the sake of money, right? Yeah. To just make money, like the, it's just driven by the desire to have more money. Yeah. And I can tell you right away, in my profession, the body work I've you know over the past twenty years worked at various retreats and and very quote unquote high end clients, very rich, very sometimes famous people, whatever, who have all that but they're definitely not happy or fulfilled. In fact, there's a lot of, you know, money does by itself it certainly doesn't bring you happiness. And I, I agree with what you mentioned before, even somebody very, a multimillion billionaire can live in scarcity consciousness yes. of just hoarding, 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 holding on more for me, less for others. And that's also the matrix trap because money in itself, it's like, it's this energy. It needs to circulate like a life force, mm -hmm. right? And that's the irony. The more you actually also truly invest or spend invest i don't mean in like stocks or what but invest in life into yourself the more you will receive but the key ingredient is really to put it into something that's really aligned with who you truly are and your values like your, yeah. exactly because for example like i did go into debt the past few years i'm not in debt anymore but i was spending it on books on on, on courses on my yoga teacher training also on traveling you know all of these things were were and not just traveling just for fun to go to the bahamas and have a vacation like traveling to expand my awareness of the world and then ultimately this is like the way that i kind of justified it was like okay I'm investing, you know, people spend 80,000 to hundred thousand dollars or whatever. I don't know how much student loans are because I don't have one, but they spend that much on their student loans. I'm going to be a student of life and this is what I'm going to spend it on. That's a matrix trap in itself, it, the student loan. Yeah, thing. exactly. And, and, and then to keep people and, in debt. And not only that, but then you have this like master's degree in this very specific thing and you have to go on this very specific career. There's not enough jobs or whatever. So I was just basically like, okay, I'm going to consciously go in debt to serve my own education 
education because I could tell that like, you know, the level of skills that I had and based on what I wanted to do, there was a discrepancy. But um, but yeah, so like it's also not but it's but but I could also tell like at the same time that, you know, once you go into debt, it does affect your consciousness. Maybe that's just me, but it did affect my because I was always paying it off. You know, I could never get ahead. I you're always, you know, what they a lot of financial you know, basic financial advice is that you would always should always have like at least three to six months or more of money in case something happens to you. As long as you're in debt, that's actually not happening. So you are living from paycheck to paycheck, I mean, even worse, you know, yeah, that's that's a sketchy thing with debt, because that's how the matrix works as well. The debt that you know, the debt consciousness to put us into, into debt on purpose. Mm -hmm. And there are metaphysical repercussions too because if you use credit debt and all get yourself in debt you're paying with something you haven't earned right and that's how they trap you even metaphysically karmically right yeah. because not through your own efforts you know ideally you don't want to spend money you don't have having said that like you mentioned you can use the matrix with the debt set up with a you know credit yeah. <clears throat> set up to your own purpose like that's what i mean you use the matrix rules through your own advantage without getting tra trapped in it swallowed up in it you yeah. know for example um, you know, when I was in my twenties uh, as a musician, I used building credit slowly. I I got into debt to have a, a music studio, right, just to pay for equipment and all of that. Yeah. To invest into that, but also be clear that I'm able to pay it off, not to like go overboard with that. Yeah. And similar to you, I've also when I started out, you know, you know, in my life, everybody's different, but I know I could never relate, even when I straight out of high school i remember my going back to college days you know i've mentioned that maybe before in the podcast but i went to business school you know studying economics and business the reason only reason i went to is because everybody else was doing this pressure from my parents and this idea oh you know life is about making money career so i need to learn business and economics i was lost i had no but passion interestingly i think that learning business could be an important exactly but let me just yeah, you yeah. know but the my point is like we're not you get out of school, you don't even know yourself, you know, as a yeah, young kid. Exactly. So I do like find, you know, it's about finding your calling in life first, right? Follow your bliss, your passion, your deeper, <clears throat> you know, quote unquote soul purpose or something that really excites you. And that pursue that and then trusting that the money will come out of that. We have turned it around. Most people, you know. Uh, look for money first and then think they need a certain amount of money before they can actually do something uh, that fulfills them or even wait for retirement, some this dangling carrot all the time, right? And what I've noticed, as long as I've followed that inner call of what I'm really excited about, then actually the universe supported me. And similar to you, um, I just... I never saved money until I was in my 40s, literally. I spent everything back into my own education, hmm. books, workshops, retreats. I went, you know, all my, when I learned body work, massage at Esalen, I spent easily over $10,000 and I didn't really have the money. Uh, it was just, it was mostly, you know, living month to month. But I noticed the more I invest into myself, the more I would come back Yeah. around like opportunities or, you know, um, but make the distinction that investing in yourself is not just investing in like nice clothes or whatever. No, no, You're that's investing not what I mean. into your soul purpose. So purpose, more in experiences, not stuff. Yeah. You know, just, you know, my own taking education into my own hand. Exactly. And I realized I need to like also pay for that, pay with yourself or like to have the means to do that and not expect anything to be handed for me over for free. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's kind of the era that we're heading into because I feel that we've, you know, seen at least many people listening to this podcast have seen that the education educational system has base is a basically a failure at this point, and they're struggling to keep up. And now what we have is like all this online learning happening, which for myself, like I had so many issues, like just sitting in a chair for hours and like being talked down to by teachers. I struggled in school so much, and it wasn't because I was smart; it was because it was a natural rebellion rebellion against the system. And there's going to be many people 
people out there who don't aren't able to fit into these confines and it's you basically have to be like a student of life and student of and make the world your school you know and now you have all these kids getting uh raised like unschooling and being i forget what it's called but children who like travel the world as part of their schooling and i think this is more the direction that we're going into because um like not only that like the way that we teach people to learn so that they can gain skills to have a career is like sit in a classroom and read and take tests like that's only one learning style that they're really catering to and a lot of people learn in different ways but yeah we, we know that that's how the matrix works so through the educational pro, um, program it's literally yeah. a program to tell people how to think it's very generalized it's not individualized it's not helping to explore the individual what is this person good as an individual and bring that out yeah right it's just and that's forming what, people into the, f- trying to fit them into the system yeah and that's what people are struggling against when they're like oh I can't because you know I need to keep this job before I do this and that and not saying that you know there's in a certain level of security that you might need but a lot of that is also I've noticed just programming and lies that they're telling themselves and you know i i know that i'm comfortable taking risks so i did take a huge risk when i did what i did but i also knew just from life experience that when i was following something i was truly passionate about that's what when it, that's when it was going to work exactly. out because that's- i tried the other avenues like i did go to i did go to college and i learned community welfare i tried to go to it's interesting even though i was already like as a teenager i was already writing as a journalist i then tried to take classes classes in journalism I was like no like I just got to trust the fact that if I want to do something I can do it and figure it out and now more than ever we actually live in a world where you can do that you know like even I remember when I when I wanted to go to school I was like oh maybe I should get like a master's in psychology or something but no actually working as a holistic life coach gives me way more freedom than if I went down that path because now I can be like I can literally learn a modality in like you know a month and then I can start applying it if I was operating under these matrix program programs with these like certificates and whatnot I actually wouldn't have that freedom I do think there's another side of the coin though we have a lot of people who are like now posing as like professionals who actually don't know what they're doing but that's a whole other topic but what I'm trying to say is like you know this abundance what when when we when we go after um anything that creates more life force in us and we're able to distinguish like what makes me feel more alive that's when we're generating exactly the energy to generate abundance because that's actually what creates abundance in the world and that's what creates abundance within our own lives exactly maybe let's talk about some from a practical perspective, what is in the way of the flow and, and in a way of creating abundance and many, many different factors come in on a multidimensional level. There's even karmic uh, considerations and all of that, the law of cause and effect. Mm-hmm. But on the very basic level, we don't question our core beliefs. Many beliefs we not be, uh, be aware of, but they're unconscious matrix programming you know one we mentioned before we feel money is evil money is dirty uh, rich people are evil so hence you know if i get money i become evil as well mm-hmm. you know and it's not to say that a lot of rich people are you know they're psychopaths there they're very entitled they're very selfish but i know having worked with many uh, individuals um are very very well off uh it actually helped me to pierce through the program program that all rich people are evil. Some of them are very conscious, aware they are where they're at. They have their own emotional struggles, issues. You know, money alone doesn't resolve it. And um, so we need to watch out not to generalize it because that's how the matrix actually – that's the irony how the matrix works. They want us actually to think, you know, the 2% is in our control, money is evil, the evil rich and all of that and then gets us in the trap of the revolutionary mind. Well, disempowerment and is really – Exactly, yeah. ultimately disempowering our own inherent creative potential because we project outwardly we blame the world we blame the elite the Rothschilds and all of that yeah and then we're like oh I'm not gonna use PayPal because I don't want to pay any fees and yeah, whatnot and all these things very, like, I'm sorry yeah that's my trigger but this <laughs> unnecessary self-defeating quote-unquote activism yeah yeah right? we're ma- you're making actually and this kind of leads into it you're making life harder for yourself you know like as much as like I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk at all but it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna use PayPal because that allows people to pay me really quickly and I know like I like you know so some points I just may need to make a choice is this gonna is this gonna help people is this gonna help me help people or is it not gonna help people that's a very important point because ultimately if you're more spiritual how can I have the biggest impact to help others to spread awareness and Tom Montauk 
he wrote an excellent article on his website uh, ties into that uh, increasing your potential to help others and he addressed the topic of like you know you somebody asked him a, a question that you know you know, I don't want to do any damage to the world and the world is corrupt and evil. I just want to live off the grid, mm -hmm. you know, be away from everyone, you know. But to do that, you have to, like, become very self-involved. Yeah. It's just about yourself and keeping that lifestyle up. It's in, 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 in insane almost. Well, you know? and not only that, like, I've I, this is like the common millennial fantasy now. It's like, oh, I'm going to move, just grow my own food. <laughs> and when I break it down to people, I'd be like, do you realize how good of a farmer and how much land you have to have to grow your own food where you're just eating your own food? Because it's not like, it's like... People think that they can just like, oh, I'm just going to plant some seeds and I'm just going to water them. And then every day I'm going to have vegetables. But no, in order to actually grow enough food for just yourself, you know, first off, one one man, I don't or one woman doesn't have the, the time of day to do it on your own. But it's just not only that, do you want to be a farmer for the rest of your life, too? Like, because that's going to be your life. And if you want to if you want to dedicate yourself to that. So it's also, you know, like getting because I actually I know this because I actually had that v visualization. And I was like, okay, I'm going to move to a permaculture farm and learn how to grow my own food. And I did have fun in the garden at first, but then eventually I was like, this is not where my talents lie. That that you make a great point because many people are actually actually very talented, drawn to tourist type people, maybe mm -hmm. you know, living in nature, growing food, and have that life. But yeah. we need to acknowledge that we have all different qualities. I know for myself, I don't really have, for example, what you call a green thumb, yeah, <laughs> right. But I'm good many other ways. I can help others. So you need to know yourself, honor where you are. And also, a true STO society service to others is everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And if you're truly aligned with your inherent God-given talents, you everybody can do something somebody else can is not able to do. Exactly. So it's your unique expression that cancels out any form of competition. Yeah, exactly. Competition comes up when you're actually insecure, not aligned with who you are, and try to, you know... Um, You know, it comes from scarcity. It comes from scarcity. And actually, you know what? That ties also into a big unconscious program, which m many of us have, myself included, especially in the past, which is in the way of creating abundance on our level, is meaning I'm not good enough mm -hmm. because I don't deserve it. Yeah. You know, because what what does it relate to? Some any possible childhood trauma, you know, or what I've been told through society or upbringing and whatnot, the I'm not good enough program. So yeah. if you're not good enough, you don't deserve, mm -hmm. right? So that expresses yourself in your ability to create abundance, to quote unquote attract money and all of that because of these inherent beliefs. And it's not that, you know, we don't, it's, you have these superficial ways of attracted what the people call the law of attraction, like the secret of just like thinking positive thoughts, visualizing that and this. But especially the film, The Secret is very much, materialistic based on stuff again we you know so you can easily get into the greed mm -hmm. so you know going back to money is energy money is fuel i like that what uh, uh barry tesla said that money is fuel fuel in a sense giving you the resources to do what you can do best to yeah. be a better of service to help others so if you move into the woods like tom Monta wrote how are you going to help others like with your talents and all of that you know so you got to also see the matrix not so black and white because within the matrix they're assisting forces as well yeah. you know for example you can also we all know taxation is theft and all of that the the corruption of the system and all of that but if i would try to just live under the radar all the time you know i would spend so much time doing that i wouldn't be able to do what i'm do to help others to do this podcast and whatnot yeah right so um we need to also sometimes what esoterica said in in gnosis uh, feed the crocodiles to keep them you know calm so to speak to be very wise with strategy and then don't have these extreme views uh this black and white thinking you know yeah. externalizing of all that this You know, these forces are evil. So we need to reject all of that and then throw out the baby with the bathwater, especially when it comes to money and abundance. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's really all about your your attitude towards money and what your values are. And then I also want to remark just really quickly that it also shows up in the astrology chart quite frequently, uh, what I've seen. Like, I don't know anyone who has who's very well off financially who doesn't have some strong second house placements. Like, it's I've seen it quite a few times. So 
you know, maybe maybe you were super rich in a past lifetime and this lifetime you need to learn how to live more simply or something like who knows, like we all also have different soul lessons as well. But, um, you know, I think that I, I've, I've just known from my experience when I was, you know, I think that there's a certain level of comfort, not too much, but not too little that you need in order to also engage in spiritual work, just on a basic I mean, some people may disagree with me because if you're in basic survival mode, like not sure how you're going to feed yourself or whatever, and I even know because I was in that mode, there's only a certain amount of spiritual work that you can do because you don't have that space, you know, you're to take it on as well. So this is also in... um this is also why it's really important. And I just also want to remark on something you said earlier, too, about escaping the world. Um, the world is actually giving us all the material that we need in order to evolve. So the more that we want to actually escape from the world, the more that we're actually probably not wanting to face our lessons. Because, like, I've heard this from multiple Buddhist teachers that, you know, you could go easily become enlightened on a mountain or out in nature. But you're true. Like, if you really committed to being a bodhisattva, go in the the middle of the city and try and practice so this is also this a whole other thing about just escaping the world escaping the world it's usually seen as i, I honestly feel like it's just an escape plan personally. exactly the distortion of spirituality and what you just mentioned was interesting to basically being able to exist physic in physical reality with the foundation before engaging in in, in spiritual work which is very interesting. Actually, Gurdjieff, I remember, mentioned that he would only accept students who already have mastered the physical reality, being able to take care of yourself, have an income yeah. in all of that on the basic foundational level before engaging into the higher work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I've even had, like, at this point in my, um, like, I guess, like, career, even though I don't like that word. In this case, whatever state I'm at as far as, like, yeah, my career. I'm just going to use that word. I don't know why I'm triggered by it. But in this point in my career, I've had people come to me and be like, oh, do you do sliding scale or whatever? And I'm like, no, my rates are actually exactly what I think is fair. And if you can't afford them right now, then I'm sorry, I don't offer that. Maybe in the future, once I have a lot of things going on, I'll start off offering like scholarships and, you know, free, I'll, I'll, depending on people who apply, I can offer free work for people. But at this point, I just don't have the, the ability to do that. I'm like t trying to hustle still to make a living and an income. So, you know, I, I, so I, and, and in the past, I used to be different, I, but it didn't work out for me. I'd be like, oh, I will trade you or, you know, because it was all coming from these self-worth issues. And I also suffered from like imposter syndrome. I was like, who am I to make money doing this when there's people who go to school and do this or whatever? That was my belief system. And it took me a while to actually see the value of what I was doing and appreciate the value of what I was doing. And then also... You know, relating to astrology, it's actually my north node is in Taurus. So it's actually my sole lesson to understand the material world. And this is not just to get money for the sake of money, which is not a Taurus lesson, but to understand the value, like the creative value, the appreciation of a beautiful thing. Like that's actually part of my own soul lesson. And you can see that's very alien to me because I'm used to kind of functioning in chaos and destruction. You know, that's my comfort zone. And now I have to have to learn security. And this basic level of security is actually what we need in order to, to, to engage in this kind of work. Because, yeah, as I said before, if you're worried about how you're going to pay your bills or whatever, then how are you going to have the extra emotional space to really dive deep into stuff? Yeah. Oh, well, you, you touch upon very many points like, <laughs> <laughs> that really that are good. We need to get into uh, number one. You said like, yeah, you know, we noticed that the topic come up. Because we have a thread on the forum, on the membership forum called exactly the Poverty Conscious. It's many, four or five pages, a lot of good insights from various people. Tom Montag posted it on there as well. I also recommend his, his uh, um, article, Opening the Flow. Um, but we, I remember because you started the thread on the forum and because it was based when we started the membership uh, section. Oh, I started that you, thread? You started it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was early on because I remember when I stepped, you know, with my work, people, you know, piercing the veil of reality, the amount of the articles on the the videos and all of that, there's tons of free content, mm -hmm. right? And then also through my own work, similar to, I hear the calling, so offering sessions, you know, certain material, I put a lot of my webinars, put a lot of um, time and energy and research into it, all of that. And 
as for an exchange, you know. Yeah. But then, especially I noticed in the so-called truth movement, you know, people got on my case, mm. on our case, like, you know, attacking me for charging, you know, a couple hundred bucks for an eight-hour webinar, right? Like, that uh, there's this entitlement almost that these things should be for free or that I'm greedy or I'm not in it for the money. You know, all these projections, yeah, yeah, which yeah. also tag into my own wounds, you know? But so I want to, let, yeah. let me just okay. finish. And <laughs> like then wanting to defend you. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, exactly. And then I remember even when we started the membership, people were complaining of $11 a month. And like, if you don't have, cannot contribute $11 a month mm. for the con, you know, for people don't even know how much work it takes. Yeah. takes for the podcast to the, the the website keeping up with the forum and all of that the time yeah. you put into and just contribute in that sense if you don't have that then it's time to reflect if you have spent time to spend you know only one hour on facebook a month yeah you know but kind of spend 11 dollars then you may get off facebook and find ways with your creativity you have a more income yeah and people don't realize that's the thing is they're giving facebook their money through giving facebook their time so your time is actually your money that's as the well. that's the who were mark henson wrote about that's a new currency attention yes the attention yeah. currency to vector away your attention so where's your attention every day what do you do with your time mm -hmm. you know and that's a saying time is money which is also somewhat a matrix program but it's also like you know, we become more consumers, you mm -hmm. know, consuming content all the time, which is fine. But then I've noticed in this younger generation, especially with this information overload on, on the Internet and you can Google anything and there's a lot of, quote unquote, free content. And that's great. That's awesome. But there's with along with it comes this entitlement that everything should be free. But there isn't a lot of free quality content. That's the That's distinction, true. you know, yeah. like you could be like, oh, I'm not going to buy this book because I can Google and find it on YouTube. Yeah, maybe you could after hours of research, but why not get a book that has all of the things that you want for, you know, an extra 25 bucks or whatever. So that's the thing is like, and not only that is this idea of free, you know, when you're this idea of free for starters is not even true because, you know, what Gurdjieff said is like you don't get anything for free you have to pay with yourself in some way so you have to give up especially in spiritual work i think tom montauk mentioned this on the forum is you're going to have to give up some part of yourself in order to engage in the work to begin with and that's what are you gonna are you gonna yeah, read yeah, that yeah. post exactly um because regarding what we talked about um you know so here i'm quoting tom from from the forum on the poverty consciousness uh Post because exactly what we talked about people not wanting to pay for mm -hmm. knowledge for services that might help them, you yeah. know. Which I see, like I mentioned before, I see they fall into the trap. They feel that if they pay something, it's not gonna, it's just they're only giving, nothing's coming back, and they don't understand the universal law that by spending it, by investing it, will she come back around. And, and you will benefit in multiple different ways. I think there's, mul just before you read that quote, though, I think there's multiple things happening there. Number one, what we talked about earlier is I know, because I know people in my family who have money but don't want to, you know, pay for things on themselves, don't want to treat themselves to massages and whatnot is because they don't feel that they're worth it, you know? Yeah, and But that. then, so there's a, there's one aspect of it. And then also, you know, I think that people who also, what my view is, is somebody contacts me and they're like, oh, I want to book a session or whatever, and they don't actually do it. It's like, you must not want it that bad. Like, yeah, exactly. So here, Tom writes, if someone's really hungry for knowledge, guidance, training, etc., they gladly pay for it proportional to the value they perceive. One problem is that some people are so ego attached that they feel they're already paying enough and having to suffer through the giving up their precious attachments in order to listen to spiritual advice. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant right there. Yeah. Subconsciously, they're thinking, so not only do you want me to give up my ego comforts and be all quote spiritual and quote awake, which I don't really feel like doing, and not only do you want me to give up my personal views and convert to your point of view, which makes me feel like I'm rolling over you, over for you, but now you want money from me too? Yeah. And he continues, if anything, they subscribe consciously feel entitled to free spiritual information as some kind of reward for stepping outside their comfort zone and giving you their time attention yeah it's really interesting that's that's, that's very predominant unconscious program so people are not aware of it mm -hmm. the other side of the equation is a poison understanding of money the idea that's finite scarce and hard to come by that money is the root of all evil 
that it's fundamentally materialistic and corrupting. That time is money, therefore you only make money in proportion to the time, energy, sacrifice you put into it. These beliefs not all these be, these believe not all how the financial elites of the world perceive it, but which the psychopaths among them have seeded into the culture of the non-elites to serve as a carrot on a stick. Like I mentioned, these are beliefs we have taken on that actually, you know, even what we project against the psychopaths, they have inserted into us to fall into vain, disempower ourselves and fall into victim blame, right? Yeah. He continues, all of these must be questioned if you want to deprogram yourself. It's it's not about selling out and becoming a money-grabbing shyster, but solving the paradox and gaining a higher metaphysical understanding of what's really going on here. For example, the idea that money is scarce and already taken by others, and entrepreneurs know that's false, which is why so many stupid stores and restaurants keep opening up and many succeed. But regardless of that, if you take into account the reality the reality creation principle, you can bend probability and synchronicity can offset a potential any potential scarcity. Easier said than done, but it goes to show that the poison pills in our subconscious concerning mining money are themselves the source of poverty scarcity more so than the actual reality. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, just to touch upon, you know, this idea of how to open the flow, I realized that the more that I had, you know, gratitude, the more that I felt I had like abundance in my life, the more that it actually started reflecting financially. Like, so this came from, you know, appreciation, finding, I mean, just on a very basic level, this is when I moved to a community and I felt very supported by everyone around me. I also had extreme gratitude. I never felt, you know, I didn't feel the same level of loneliness and isolation that I felt before, although that's kind of... You know, it's kind of the journey of any spiritual path that you're you are in this alone in your own experience. Um, but I just saw the abundance already ex in existence, and I and it was just a rea it was just part of my own reality, and it was really honestly a state of consciousness. And even now, like the more that you see that money is something that you have to suffer for and struggle for, and there's not enough, like they literally print it and it's just like it's an illusory the whole banking system is just like i don't even get it to begin with like it just seems like like the u.s is like billions of dollars in debt like i don't even get how they you know i mean obviously i don't have a lack of knowledge there but it's to me it also just seems like such a illusory system to begin with and it's all based it on is. it's all based on our own belief systems it's also based on our state of consciousness and i really feel you know, uh, the matrix basically took this kind of rewiring of us. We don't kind of bind together anymore. We compete against each other and exaggerated it to the, um, like to the maximum. And here's the thing how the matrix really works. It's not too much that things are being quote unquote done to us. Yes. On a maybe appearance level, but through the mind control that are programming from other forces, the beliefs we have installed within us based on trauma, wounding, the self that, that we create, that reality they want us to create Yeah, in a sense, you know? So, but going to the point you made that really truly to increase, increase the flow of money, which is energy versus fuel, you must exercise your ability to spend it. Like yes. the more you spend it, the more you receive. However, that <clears throat> people may say like, oh my God, that makes sense. I've gotten in debt. I don't want, you know, you know, it's not about quote unquote throwing money out of the window and indulging, you know, into materialism yeah. or just, you know, you need to do the self work. Like when you spend something, is it coming something from deep inside because of wounds and trauma and you just f trying to mask it up by looking for material fulfillment? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we see older guys getting into sports cars and whatnot, what, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, to each their own, but this material indulgence. As opposed to this is aligned with what you mentioned with your true values of something you truly want to do for yourself and helps you to help others for yourself to have a certain lifestyle that helps you to thrive more on all levels, spiritually, yeah. emotionally, psychologically, and all of that. And where's the spending? How do you spend it as well with what state of mind? Because I noticed as well, you know, like you mentioned, when I was really truly passionate, something in body work, massage, like I mentioned, took many different workshops at Aslan that was not cheap and I had hardly any money i was really scraping it but the more i spent into that it would come back with more clients i would see the reward mm -hmm. right 
It's just the mind is the trickster. Even with food, like for example, the last thing I want to save money on is what goes into my body. So I want high quality food. Especially these days. These Jesus. days, you know. <laughs> but then people are like, oh, Whole Foods is evil. Like, yeah, you can get into all of that. You know, even at the farmer's market, some of the stuff, I'm, for, I'm sorry, is, is more expensive than at, at Whole Foods, mm. you know. Yeah. And I'm glad to, I'm more happy than support local farmers and all of that. But I also learned when I spend money on something I really need and want, to not spend it in the mindset of like, oh my God, can I really afford this? Shouldn't, yeah. you know what I mean? To, and, and, but, you know, because that, that, that's not, you're not spending it unconditionally, you know, so to speak. If you spend it at the same time worrying, you restrict the flow just to completely give it up and own this is what I want, this is what I deserve it at this moment. Yeah. You know, that's what I, it what benefits me. That's what I learned. You, the universe supports you. Recently, I also, with my work, for example, I need to receive body work a few times a, a month. Yeah. So I spend three, four hundred dollars a month just on receiving body work, yeah. right? And my mind, like, can I really afford now? Like, this is what I need. And when I really, with this mind state of like, this is what I need to do for myself so I can become a better force for the divine, exactly. right? Then the divine universe supports me and I'm actually getting the means to support that lifestyle you also i just also want to say though that you're also at a certain point and this is something i want to touch on too where it's really these root chakra issues like security grounding working on your own stability your family issues your early upbringing knowing how to meet your needs for survival you're at the point where you can make that choice consciously mm. but i know for myself like you know this is also directly related and some people may argue with me, but, um, you know, the more that you have this basic sense of stability and have you worked on your early family childhood issues, this is also what Barry Tesler teaches in her course. It's like work on your early upbringing, especially your core beliefs around money. Your first experience That's, around she money. She doesn't get you to bookkeep or do anything until you target these main things because this is like also like pulling the root out of it. Yeah. And so... You know, that's kind of like now that you have a certain level of stability in that area, you can make these conscious choices. But when people are in this kind of survival mode, it's like just work on your root chakra, work on grounding, find a stable home that you feel comfortable with. The basics. All of, yeah, it, even all these basics. And it's not about this not being spiritual. No, this is your foundation for doing work. Like if you have a comfortable home that you can feel safe in, that you know that you can provide for yourself, then you're going to easily be able to go into these deeper things. And there's a path towards too because also like you know at the beginning I was struggling like anybody else I had worked you know I started I worked in an animal hospital for eight dollars an hour cleaning shit out of the cages you know to support my music but I didn't mind doing this because my music passion was the music and all of that so as long as you have something giving like doing something that gives you joy passion that's something that entails also doing the inner work to align with what you truly want to do in life mm -hmm. right and where's the desire coming from as well is this high alignment and i'm not saying you know everybody's different and people may get upset like i can't find this i'm struggling i have to pay for you know you know i have a family i have children but then you also need to take I'm for say to say a responsibility because for every decision you made in your life, whatever you got yourself into, that it has consequences. Yeah, you know? and it is, but it is like going back to this thing about um, you know the the fall of like our tribal society too is that. I see more than anything, there's a lot of pressure on mothers. It's like, you just have to raise a child on your own. You don't have any aunts and yeah. uncles, any relatives around because everyone's moved all over the place. And so, you know, in order to raise a child these days, you actually have to create your own support systems in that way. And that consciously, because before, like even myself growing up, I had aunts and uncles and grandparents who took care of me. You know, it was a village taking care of me, basically, and not to mention all my neighbors. And now there's a lot of pressure on mothers, you know, and not to say say that they, you know, I just want to acknowledge that that's what's happening. But at the same time, it's about like, you know, working against that and being like, okay, I'm going to find a community center. I'm going to find, you know, a, a group that where moms meet or whatever. I'm going to make my own support systems because I can see that there's a lack of that now. Yeah. So th it's almost like we have to work with what we have, you know, in order to, in order to create the life that we want. Yeah. That's also the matrix. Um, program right now or agenda of destroying the family unit yeah. right the, the quote unquote traditional family even yeah. more so than you know yeah and not only that it's like we you know like for myself I I, I think that I think it was also because in one of and in, anyway I'm giving away a lot of my astrology chart but basically my north node is in the 11th house as well and this is also about community too and learning how you know this is also why the other day I was like let's go knock on our neighbor's door and go talk to him because I really I really see the importance 
importance, especially since, you know, we live in um, there's forest fires going on around us where we are right now. And and I want to I want to be able to knock on the neighbor's door and talk to them and not feel afraid of them. And to me, this is also this root chakra thing is like, okay, how do I feel grounded on the earth that I'm on, you know, and how do I feel that safety? That's true. That's, you know, that's also one of the reasons we have, you know the membership section of the forum it's yeah. online but for many especially these topics so many people experience loneliness they kind of talk about these deeper topics so especially internationally to meet on the forum yes it's limited online but we just re- yesterday had the zoom call again the group zoom call and it's just great to talk to people right yeah. uh, you know on that basic level and then create that kind of community i'm still like it gets sketchy that's a whole other topic about so-called conscious communities which you know based on some sort of ideal but but this is just about it it helps on a more smaller circle on the personal level yeah right but what i want to really get into because you mentioned also many times astrology in your astrology chart um it's really important because we talked about these inherent beliefs we have need to question our subconscious right but then i'm sure people ask you know may ask the questions there well how do you justify people living in severe poverty having no food and shelter third world countries and we can see how the matrix works to keep certain um countries in poverty on purpose you know yeah. if there will be equality of you know whatever like people would everybody would have a conscience in the world that people in power nobody would have to live in poverty however you know, that's where the mind, because I used to think like this as well, like, you know, we, the matrix keeps us in, you know, in poverty and all this shit is being done to us, which is true from that level, but we're multidimensional. This goes beyond the mind. And, you know, what do we really know about the person's soul lesson, soul purpose, the mm-hmm. karmic lesson, which in the fringe new age, whatever movement, they almost dismiss that now as well. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody needs to be blamed, Right. But even like an astrology chart, like told me, I learned this a lot from you, from what I've worked with astrology, how every situation is so particular when it comes also to karma around abundance yeah. and money as well. Like some people. And let me sorry, just yeah. finish that. You know, I don't want to see people starving or people homeless, but what do I really know about this person? How did the person got them got, got there? You know, is this just mm-hmm. a victim of society? What are the deeper soul lessons? Uh, and and karmic lessons that's really going on you know I don't know that I hardly still figure my own and that's not to use this excuse new age excuse oh well, this is just your karma mm-hmm. you know that's also a distortion of it but understanding that their 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 energies at work uh, and that goes beyond our comprehension of our little ego mind right with mm-hmm. this a- analysis yeah and I also feel once again it's like this you know once we started like if you look at um, like what would have happened back in hunter gatherer times when they started birthing agriculture, one person has a really great crop and the next person next to him dies. Like that was this birth of inequality. Like he started hoarding his resources and then the yeah. neighbor next to him didn't matter. So this is a whole and I just want to remark that I feel this is a whole system that needs to be changed, not only on our basic nervous system level and the way that we relate to each other, but the like globally as well. And as we actually change our system, then the rest of it will change. But who knows, like, like, as you said, you know, there's people um, who I think that every I really believe that everything is a soul lesson when it comes down to it. And, um, you know, I also from my own experience, I've I've realized that some of the greatest, most traumatic experience in my life, they ended up being gifts. There's a reason why in astrology, Scorpio, the house of death and destruction and of divorce and losing everything is opposite Taurus, which is a house of abundance and material, the material world. So the, we're working with these polarities and we're learning through these polarities always. So who knows, you know, what someone's so lesson is. But I think what I would actually, if someone brings up that question, you know, because the, the it's, it's not so much about um, the, them can being really concerned about people living in poverty. It's like, what is it that's getting triggered in themselves when you bring up these topics? Because any time someone tries to make it about something out there, it's actually because something is going on for them that they don't know how to express. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then also falling, that, you know, into the self righteous thing. You know, like you know where people use a lot of this activism, or what do you call it, philanthropy. Philanthropy, you know, yeah. and Shirobino was very uh, critical of that philanthropy, almost like the ego's sly maneuver, you know, to um, avoid, 
your own process by, you know, making yourself feel better that you're helping others. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't mean to be selfish in its own, but understanding deeper, deeper processes, you know, on the basic psychological unconscious level, the programs have the beliefs we never question, then on a somatic emotional level to a karmic level and ultimately, you know, on a spiritual level to bring it back to the divine, to understand yeah. like who owns money. It's not neither owned by the banks, whatever, and also not falling, this hoarding, this possession, this is mine, 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 you know, but giving it under the, uh, the to surrender to the divine, right? Yeah. That you're just an instrument and in how you can use it in alignment with the divine, your higher self, you know, but you never, you know, um, claim it, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, exactly. And it's, that's the whole thing is I think you can have a healthy non-attachment to money and just see this is in the amount of fuel that I have right now that I can decide on how to you know, invest it. And when you have a lack of fuel, you have this lack of energy to do the things that you want to do. And I think this is also why I think it was Chung and Trumpa. Yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure it's Chung and Trumpa because Reggie Ray was telling this story um, about how he wanted to teach these advanced Tibetan Buddhist practices to Westerners. And his, the whole institution was like, no, 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 you can't do that. You know, they're not ready for it. And he was like, no, because Westerners have this basic level of material security, they're actually really ready to do the work. Whereas in Tibet, like it's like they're struggling on a basic level, you know, so we are ready for we are ready for these things. But it's also getting ourselves out of the mindset too. does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so we are ready to take on these spiritual teachings if we're if we're not in this scarcity consciousness, you know, exactly. and we're able to and really just figure out, like, how can I feel like a basic level of safety in a home? And then that's your spiritual work. You know, if that's that's already spiritual work. You know, sometimes I can see myself. We try to put the cart in front of the horse or spiritual bypass and try to go to fast or higher levels where we need to just work on the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned that in my article, in my le uh, recent essay, the necessity to surrender to the divine and spiritualize the being, the fourfold approach on all levels, right? <clears throat> the physical, the foundation, the emotional, the psychological, the spiritual. It also needs to work together, but we need to also, you need to have that foundation, yeah. right? And essentially... You know, it goes back to what we mentioned at the beginning because it all ties into the matrix temptation of wealth, sex, and power, which are not bad in themselves, just how you even sex itself, there's a higher creative force behind it. And power can also give you like not power over others or feeding of a fame and all of that, where the narcissistic ego ties into that or hijacks all of that, but to use it to be a force of change for to help others in the world as well, you mm -hmm. know. But what happens that, you know, from the a cult perspective or an integral yoga perspective that the human ego is highly attracted to wealth, sex, and power. And then your call forces hijack it, you know, and then people are being actually controlled or possessed by money, sex, and power instead of uh, the controlling them without, instead of them controlling it without the attachment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> in service to the divine, so the aesthetic spiritual distortion or rejection of the material world then is 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 the other extreme. Um, and to maybe to finish it off, the first hour uh, with this quote from Sri Rabindu, what I just mentioned uh, about money, sex, and power, specifically money. He writes, money is the visible sign of the universal force, and this force in its manifestation on earth works on the vital and physical planes and is indispensable to the fullness of the outer life. In its origin and its true action, it belongs to the divine. But like other powers of the divine, it is delegated here and in the ignorance of the lower nature can be usurped for, for the uses of the ego or held by Asuric or call force influences and perverted to their purpose. This is indeed one of the three forces, power, wealth, sex, that have the strongest attraction to the human ego and the Asura, Asura called forces and are most generally misheld and misused by those who retain them. The seekers or keepers of wealth are more often possessed than rather its possessors. Few escape entirely a certain distortion influence stamped on it by its long seizure and perversion by the Azura. For this reason, most spiritual disciplines insist on the complete self-control, detachment and renunciation of all bondage to wealth and all of personal egoistic desire for its possession. Some even put a ban on money and riches and proclaim poverty and bareness of life as the only spiritual condition. But this is an error. 
it leaves the power in the hands of the hostile forces. To reconquer it for the divine to whom it belongs and use it divinely for the divine life is the supramental way for the sadaka. You must neither turn with an aesthetic shrinking from the money power, the means it gives and the object it brings, nor cherish, nor, nor cherish a rajastic attachment for them or a spirit of enslaving self-indulgence in their gratifications. Regard wealth simply as a power to won be won back for the Divine Mother and placed at her service. All wealth belongs to the Divine, and those who hold it are trustees, not possessors. It is with them today, tomorrow it might be elsewhere. All depends on the way they discharge their trust while it is with them, in what spirit, in what consciousness, in their use of it, and to what purpose. Mm -hmm. you know? And that also ties into that what we mentioned before, we can go more into the second hour, that money is not to be hoarded, it's meant to circulate constantly, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so please join us for the second hour. We're getting into more topics. I definitely want to talk more about this idea of like fear, trauma, scarcity, because that's something that I struggled with quite a bit. And our own personal experience is living in scarcity. Um, also, I really want to touch on this idea of like charge what you're worth. And then also we can talk about people who do charge really high rates and claim it's because of an abundance mindset. So how once again, the distortion this, of exactly, that. This, yeah. there's distortion on distortion on distortion. And also just this illusion of things costing more, therefore it must be better. I have a bunch of examples for that. So yeah, please join us in the second hour. Exactly. You want to give more practical advice and share more of our own experiences. And then, yeah, if, if you're not already a member, you can sign up at veilofreality.com if you like to invest <laughs> and also have access to the forum where we have you know many discussions also about this topic in way more depth see you guys at the second hour